Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting equation. We're doing this for the first time. It is the signum function, also known as the sine function, but not the trigonometric sine function. So we have x to the power signum of x cubed minus x equals x squared minus 4 over 9. And we're going to be looking for real values of x. So what, what is the meaning of the signum function? I'm going to give you a definition and a couple facts about this particular function. It's a very interesting function and it's related to some of the functions that we already know. And then we're going to proceed with the solution. And at the end, I'm going to show you something interesting. Okay, cool. Now, here's the definition and some facts about the signum function. Well, signum function can be defined as a piecewise function, obviously. And it is known as something that turns the value to a number. So any x, if x is positive, it just turns it into 1. If x is negative, it turns it into negative 1. So it just looks at the sign of the expression. And of course, if there's no sign, if it's 0, then it just keeps it as 0. So sort of like an absolute value, but slightly different. If you look at the second bullet point here, you notice the relationship between the absolute value and the signum function. And obviously, this is true for all values. But if x does not equal 0, if x does not equal 0, then we can go ahead and write something nicer. We can write the signum function as x divided by the absolute value of x or absolute value of x divided by x because those two expressions are obviously equivalent if x does not equal 0. Of course, for x equals 0, it's a different story. You can take the limit, but not find the particular value. Anyways, so there's a relationship between this and the absolute value. And if you look at the next one, it's pretty interesting. And you can kind of talk about the proofs or even turn this into a really crazy equation, right? So we're given here in terms of the floor function and the absolute value, which is, I think, really, really cool. And I wanted to end this bullet, these bullet points with a question, something I want you to think about, of course, it will be answered pretty soon, is the signum function continuous at x equals 0. Why am I asking at 0? Because 0 is where the, you know, the function changes, kind of like it branches off. Obviously, other points, it's going to be continuous. Now, let's take a look at the graph of this function, y equals signum, signum x. And as you can see here, it's probably something that you've seen before. Maybe you didn't know it was called the sine or the signum function, but don't make sure you don't get confused. This is not the sine cosine sine, but it's just the signum sine. So at zero, it's zero, and otherwise it's one or negative one. Okay, great. So you can tell from here whether it's continuous at zero or not, right? Let me not answer that question either. And here's our equation. Let's go ahead and solve this equation. And then after this, I'm going to show you something. Okay, let's proceed. So by that definition, this tells me that I need to know where x cubed minus x is positive, where it's negative, where it's zero, right? Obviously, that's where the thing changes. So let me go ahead and make a table here, table of values. So we can make a table like this obviously, with two rows. x goes here. I should probably make these a little longer. x cubed minus x goes here. And the signum of x cubed minus x goes here. Now, if you want, you can add another, you know, row to this if you want. It's not super necessary. You could. And then write the value of x to the power, but I'm going to do it later. So we have, we have to find the critical values here. So let me go ahead and set x cubed minus x equal to zero. And what do we find from there? If x cubed minus x is equal to 0, obviously I can factor it as x times x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. From here we get x times x plus 1 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. And as you know, those values are going to be negative 1, 0, and 1. Okay? Now, based on the definition of the signum function, we know that these are the roots. This is like negative infinity. That's the positive infinity. Of course, I'm not talking about a point, but just kind of like a limit value. So if x approaches infinity, then x cubed minus x is obviously going to stay as a positive quantity because of the leading coefficient. So it's going to be positive here, negative here, positive here, negative here. None of these are double roots, so it's not going to, it's going to change the sign every time. And by definition, signum of this is going to be negative 1 here, positive 1 here, negative 1 here, and positive 1 here. And of course, at these points, it's going to be 0. All right? So based on this, let's go ahead and write our function, x to the power signum x cubed minus x, as a piecewise defined function, and then proceed 
with the solution. So we're going to use our table now to write this x to the power signum x cubed minus x can be written as follows. Now, if x is here, if x is here or here, meaning that between negative 1 and 0 or greater than 1, then my exponent is going to be 1, so this is going to equal x. If x is between negative 1 or and 0, or x is greater than 1. If otherwise, otherwise, my function, if it's here or here, then the exponent is going to be 1, x to the power negative 1 is going to be 1 over x. If x is less than negative 1, or between 0 and 1. And what happens if the x values are negative 1 or positive 1 or 0? 0 to the power 0 is a little problematic, so I'm going to skip that part. But uh, feel free to comment what you think about it. But if x is negative 1 or positive 1, then we're going to have x to the power 0, obviously, which is defined to be 1. So our function is going to equal 1 if x is... Maybe we can change the color here just to make it a little bit, you know, like more colorful, right? And in this case, at these points, at these points, our function is going to equal 1 if x is negative 1 or positive 1. So let's go ahead and write our equation uh, based on this definition. Okay, so we're going to look at different cases. If x is between negative 1 and 0 or greater than 1, which is the first top branch, my function is going to equal x to the power signum x cubed minus x is going to equal x, but we also know that it's equal to x squared minus 4 over 9. That's given in the problem. So that means this is going to equal x. And you, what do you get from here? You get a quadratic equation, right? So let's go ahead and write it as a quadratic. To keep a long story short, I'm just going to give you the quadratic. This is easy. You can do it. And this quadratic is factorable, interestingly, right? And we get nice solutions. Of course, I gave you nice numbers here, right? Be nice. So from here, we get two solutions. X is either negative one-third or X is four-thirds. Of course, we're going to be looking at the initial criteria here. X must be between negative one and zero or greater than one. And both of these solutions seem to satisfy the criteria. Therefore, they are valid solutions. But are those the only solutions? Let's find out. We're going to be looking at another case now. And the other case is if x is less than negative 1 or x is between 0 and 1. In this case, as you know from our piecewise defined function here, our x to the power signum is going to equal 1 over x. So we can write it as basically x squared minus 4 over 9, which is equal to x to the power signum x cubed minus x, which is going to equal 1 over x. Now, obviously, this equation is not going to be that nice because that's going to give you a cubic equation. If you make a common denominator, you get 4x, 9x squared minus 4, and if you multiply that by x and then set it equal to 9, so on and so forth. To keep a long story short, again, I'll give you the cubic. It's going to look like this. 9x cubed minus 4x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. Now, how do you solve this equation? There's a cubic formula, Cardano, so on and so forth, but, you know, you could also use some technology here and find the solution as 1.1 722 thanks to Wolfram Alpha. And of course, there are other solutions as well, but the other solutions are going to be complex. I'm sorry about that, but they are complex. And you may argue that are these solutions going to satisfy the equation? And how do you check them against the criteria x must be less than negative 1? Because you can't order complex numbers. Well, some people say you can partially order them, but anyways, you can't really compare them to a real number like negative 1 or 0 or 1, right? So how are you going to verify the solutions? That's another question to ask. Anyway, so is this a valid solution, 1.17 something? No, because it's not in the interval that we specified at the beginning, right? So here, our number needs to be less than negative 1 or between 1 and 0. So this doesn't satisfy, therefore, I'm going to go ahead and reject that solution. Therefore, these two seem to be the only valid solutions. And before we end the video, I want to show you something interesting. Ta-da! Which is the graph of this two equations. Why are there two equations? Because I graphed x to the power signum x cubed minus x and 
y equals x squared minus 4 over 9. Obviously, that's a parabola, the green one. And the blue one is our x to the power signum function, which is pretty interesting, right? Obviously. But what do you notice here is that you get the solutions. Isn't that amazing? Like you can check this with graphs. And thanks to Desmos, obviously, it's a great tool, by the way. And by the way, this video is not sponsored by Desmos. I'm just talking about it because I use Desmos all the time. Anyways, so notice that this is one of the solutions and this is the other solution. And guess what? This is equal to negative one third and this is equal to four thirds. So what happens is we basically get our solutions from here. This is going to be negative one third and this is going to be four thirds. And those are the valid solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the new topic. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.